So, uh, just uh, laying here on the floor. <clears throat> There's actually a laptop charger next to me. I don't know if its fan is going to seem extra loud to you. Oh, look at that. <laughs> well, I guess you guys see Saki there. He just hopped on my back. And he just uh, came in to keep company with uh, some plants. There's a rosemary and a jasmine and mint and datura, a grape, uh, papyrus, uh, palm, banana, a uh, pitcher plant, and uh, like to come in and sort of sit with them during their change or just come in for the season. Uh, almost all of them. One of the ones I just showed just stays in. But anyway, you yeah, know, they've come in and sort of made their shift to the indoors. So it makes, it makes me think about, you know, sheltering. And also comfort, which of course is similar to discomfort, you know, same quality, same uh, spectrum. And so just change, you know. Well, they have to undergo a certain amount of stress, you know. I thought I'd just sort of touch in on that. I like to sit with them each year, uh, each season that they go in or out, you know, when there's a change like that. And just, uh, <clears throat> I don't pray for them or try and send them energy or just try and sit with them sort of consciously listening, uh, but not listening for something, just listening. I think by now you know I don't mean this kind of listening necessarily. Actually, when I noticed that you know, just above me is the ceiling fan here, and uh, that was, I think, the first video I did had the ceiling fan above us, maybe the second or so, it feels like the one of the first few, I think might even have been the very first, so if you've been uh, following along at home, you might uh, recognize the fan, you know, or have called to mind one of our early meditations. How you doing, Saki? Yeah? I'm pretty good. Saki just came in from outside with me under the overcastness, which is also under the moon. And so, sitting as completely consciously as we can. Listening and just kind of considering the idea of change and comfort and sheltering. One of the thoughts I have is that my plan is to bring the plants into security, safety, uh, shelter, you know, because of the, the change in the winds and the freezing rain and the obviously freezing temperatures and snow uh, and the changed angle of the sun in the shorter days and, you know, all the many reasons that they'd be unlikely to last outside but <clears throat> the plant being in the moment wasn't thinking of the winter coming or worried about the thing, winter coming that was me it's entirely on me doesn't mean it was insensible it's just that the truth is just like, hey, these photons taste great. Hey, this is some good nitrogen today. And hey, that bug is tickling me again. Just in the moment, you know. But my act of sheltering them, moving from outside to in, you know, changes the light they get, changes the humidity, changes the, perhaps the angle of the light available to them. 
due to their relative positioning with the windows and skylights and such. Changes the regularity and perhaps the amounts of water. I'm probably not likely to give them six days of a lot of water, which could happen outside. You know, so the, the amount of variation, which I can't, let's say the amount of variation outdoors with water is this. My taking care of them is likely to be in here. I might forget to water them a little too much or water them too much, but it's still kind of here compared to what could happen outside. The same with temperatures and light. You know, the temperature that they'll be in is going to be much more fixed. <clears throat> it's not likely to change much from, you know, uh, midday to midnight. You know, there's a thermostat inside. But, you know, it probably represents some stress to the plant to come inside. In my head, I said, boy, I've done a good thing. I can have a piece of cheesecake. I saved all the plants. I thought ahead and brought them inside. But the, for the plants, don't feel like they're saved from anything. Because they weren't aware of what's coming. And they certainly weren't worried about it. What they do experience is the stress of being pulled out of how they are. Having an entirely new environment, which I insist on seeing as safer and better. So it can be helpful to recognize that shelter is change. You know, if we're using the word shelter, then we're using it in contrast to, you know, some relative lack of shelter. So the fact of shelter is some change. And change isn't always experienced as comfortable. And even if the plants do acclimate in here, and in some way they're grateful that they live through the winter when there's a three feet of snow outside, you know, still the discomfort is real. It's now it's experienced, you know, what I think a you know, plant person would call a stress or a series of environmental stressors. So if I just listen to my ego, I think, boy, I did a good thing for them. They're happier, they're better. That takes me out of the moment that they're in, which is a stressed moment. Again, relatively speaking, I don't know if they're all exactly wilting, and, oh, but there's a, a challenging change for them. So what does that mean for my own brothers and sisters, what does that mean for my own extended humanity? What does that mean for other people in my orbit or relationships? We're going to do a little meditation. you to the meditation with me, which is to become as fully present in this moment with the plants as I can. I'll give you another look at them before I begin. You can see this duckwood is wilted in the, this one, which I, again, as always, can't be entirely sure that I'm quite a bit of a difference for these two and there's the uh, pitcher plant and the banana and the uh, papyrus base here and behind it the uh, palm and there's uh, the 
lucky there. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. And there's a, there's my Baba back here with his guru. Uh, there's a photo from Hadley Manning's over there. So, we'll come into presence. Stomach one, gallbladder three, CO twenty, twenty one. Uh, Master process. Connection here. Kidney 27. Long to go. I'm just going to rest into some breathing. I just check in on my body. Check in on my breath. Check in on my heart center, emotional state. And on the particular tint of the lenses through which I see the world, which might be described as the psychological shape I'm in at the moment. I'm trusting that enough of these check-ins and these facets are going to come to a fair estimation of the state of this self here and now. And so I've done the check-ins and suspending the thinking. Just being here, trying to <clears throat> continue to open my awareness to the plants for which I am entering into the state of presence. Again, not really listening for something. I'm just trying to get lost in myself. And that sort of ego self-massage. I'm doing this to be present for the plants. I may learn something, but I'm not doing it to learn something. be partly open, heavy lidded, breathing the air that I'm experiencing is cool.
Hey, buddy. Thank you. Come here. So, I'm not knee-jerkily not bowing to the plants. If I knew why, I would. But you might be thinking, why don't I bow to the plants after this? And the reason is that I wasn't asking something of them. I was just opening myself to them. But I could have decided that it felt appropriate to bow, like thanking them for allowing me to be in their space. I might have seen it that way. Mm, that's fine. I just kind of feeling into myself. I didn't feel like I wanted to thank them for something. It was more meditation about me trying to be a certain way, as catalyzed by them or as directed to them. Or so if that helps. But thank you all very much.